Hello and welcome to part 6 of the Complete Beginner's Guide to Blender 3. In this episode we'll be finishing off our monster character. Do remember to check out the playlist on this channel or my website for more great content. So here's where we got up to last time and I'd like to give you a challenge to do the head and the arms by yourself. Now if we look at the arms, they're slightly angled inwards, so as if he's got a hunch to his back, but I want you to create the arms without that rotation to start off with. Then we can select the whole entire arm and rotate it afterwards. So the challenge is to create one arm, mirror it across the other side, and create the head and the eyes all by yourself. So pause the video and I'll show you how I did it afterwards. Okay, let's go to front view, shift right click, shift A to add, mesh and then cube, move that into position. I'll scale it, but not in the Z axis, so shift Z to exclude the Z axis. G to grab, move that into position. I'll scale it a bit in the Z there, I think, somewhere around here. Shift D to duplicate for the forearm, scale that down to somewhere around here. He's got quite long arms, this one. Shift D to duplicate, and then we've got the hand. I'll scale that in the Z, so it's sort of fairly square. So it's around there, scaling the X. So this is as if their arm is right by their side like this. I make sure it's fairly flat down here. Let's just go into side view and add some fingers. So Shift D for this, scale in the Y, round to the front, scale in the X. And I'll scale in the Z a little bit there, make them a bit shorter. Back to side view and repeat those. I'll rotate that just a touch so it sticks out that way. Shift D to duplicate and rotate that a touch this way. And Shift D to duplicate and rotate it so it's in the middle like this. I'll move them back, that's our little finger, so it's a little bit smaller, something like this. So it's got a bit of an arc to it, as you can see your hand's fingers do. Makes it a tiny bit more natural. I'll duplicate one of these, Shift D to duplicate and bring it around to the thumb. The thumb you usually put slightly down towards the base of the hand like this, and then rotate it around as well. So it's around there. I think all these fingers could be a bit longer, so I can select them all, and this gives me a chance to show you an interesting tool. If I come up to the Transform Pivot Point, click on that and choose Individual Origins. If I press S then Z twice for their local Z axis, it moves them all in their local Z axis. So that's quite handy. I've rotated them a bit, but I can make them all longer. I'll quickly undo that and show you. If I had just pressed S then Z, it would distort the shape slightly. So S then Z twice for the local Z axis, and it's doing them all individually. So it's got their individual local Z axis. So that's that tool up there, individual origins. Median point is the normal one, and that's sort of like the average point in the middle. If I press S then Z now, it will actually distort the shape slightly, although it's not making a huge difference in this case. I'll rotate these fingers now a little bit, just about there to give it a sort of natural grip look. You could even go to town a bit, and if I come around to the bottom here, so you can see the rotation, but I can rotate by the local z-axis again, that one going up and down, so there's a bit of a curve to the hand, R, Z, Z, like this. So again, it gives it a bit of a natural look, but it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. Same with this one, R, Z, Z. It's a little bit tricky sometimes to figure out which axis is the local z-axis, depending on how much you've rotated it, but you can just press R, then Y, Y, XX or ZZ to figure out which one's which. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Let's organize the shape a bit. For that, I'll select the arm and press forward slash on my numpad to go to local view. Cross the side view. Now I can start editing the shape a bit to create this sort of bend at the arm again to give it a more sort of natural look. Also, I can go into these shapes into edit mode. Then I can go into wireframe mode. That will help me when it comes to editing my shape. And maybe select this bottom face here, scale that in a bit perhaps scale the top one up a bit. Back to object mode, select the upper arm, into edit mode, can do a loop cut around the middle for a bicep, so control R to do a loop cut around the middle, double left click to set that in place, scale that up a bit, maybe move this edge down here. You can't see that selected because it's kind of going away from us. You can always go to vertex mode and select both those, but just make sure that you select both vertices by box selecting like this, and I can move these into position nice and easily. I can move this up a little bit, so it's a bit like a tricep at the back there as well. These are minor edits, not particularly necessary, but they can just help to sell the object. Okay, let's go back to solid mode, come around to the side here and see how we're doing, and let's bring back the rest of our shape with forward slash on the numpad. Now I'm still in edit mode, so watch out for that. Let's go back to object mode and select that arm again. To front view, and let's rotate it a little bit here, so it's out at the side slightly, and I'm going to R then Z, so around the Z axis, so it's got a bit of a hunch like this and just adjust it and move it into position. Make sure you have median point on for this, not individual origins. I'll show you what happens if it's individual origins. 
they all move around their individual origins. So back to medium point for this. So a little bit more of a rotation there, I think. And for the hand, this is sort of down to artistic look and feel now to get the position how you want it. I might make the hands a bit bigger as well and just edit this shape until I'm happy. Also, I might bring this arm, just, I might just leave a little bit of space for a big shoulder. So let's stick it out a bit more over here. Somewhere around there is looking fun. So shift right click and let's add shift A to add. Remember, if you've only got the mesh menu, you might still be in the edit mode. Add an icosphere, scale that down just a touch and move that across here. So we've got this huge shoulder joint just there. That looks quite fun. Let's do our mirror now. So select one of these objects. It doesn't matter which one, any along the arm that's going to be mirrored into the spanner there, add modifier mirror, choose our mirror object, which is going to be the torso, or it could be the trunk here as well. Then select all the arm. Make sure you've got the one with the mirror that's the active object, and it is, it's got a yellow outline. If it's not, just left click on the one you want, and that's the active object. Then control L to copy modifiers. It's looking good. You might want to adjust a little bit more now you can see the mirror, so into front view, move this off to the side, I think, and I might just adjust his torso a bit, so into edit mode with that, wireframe, and select these and make him even wider. Back to solid mode, there we go. It's looking pretty cool, just the head to do now. Back to object mode, remember? In fact, let's just remind ourselves, let's say I added it in edit mode by accident, so shift right click, shift A to add. I only see the mesh menu. Let's select a cube, start scaling it down and move it into position. So R, then X to rotate it. And then I think, oh no, it's added to the other object. How can I separate it? Well, we press P to separate by loose parts, just there. Now I'm still in edit mode for the original shape here. So back to object mode and select my new shape. And interestingly, it's got a mirror because the original shape had a mirror. And I can just get rid of that mirror by closing it down there. And you can see it's removed the mirror. So I've got this head. I want to make it nice and small, I think. Now, one thing you'll notice is that when you separate objects, it keeps the origin point of the original, which was just there. And you can reset the origin point by right clicking, set origin, origin to geometry. So that moves the origin to the middle of where the geometry is, which is just there. Now when I press S to scale, moves in the middle. So somewhere around there, I think. And let's reposition this head. Somewhere about here, I think. You can always edit this a bit more later. Let's go up to the eyes, shift right click to move our 3D cursor, shift A to add, mesh and then cube. Scale it right down for the eyes. Now, if I want it to have the exact same rotation as my head, let's select the head, see the rotation there, click on it, control C to copy, click on my eye, control V to paste. And it's got exactly the same rotation. Also, I want it to mirror to the other side. So add modifier mirror and choose the mirror object. Probably the head would make the most sense this time. Now let's press G to grab in the local z-axis. Ah, oh, now interestingly, it hasn't actually got the same rotation as my head because my head was originally part of this object. And when I separated it, I must have lost a little bit of rotation there. So it's a little bit out, so it's not gonna be quite the same. If that happens to you, then you do have to start doing things by eye and lining things up. If I click on that and press G then ZZ, you can see it's not quite the local z-axis because it was attached to this object. Not that it matters too much in this case. So I want to move these down just a touch more. So G, Z, Z to around about there and into edit mode. And if I move this lot of vertices, let's go to wireframe for that to make sure we select the back ones as well. So this lot here, scale in the local Z, so Z twice and G in the local Z to move it upwards. And then he's got a sort of frown a menacing look. Okay, back into object mode, back into solid mode. And let's have a look at this wonderful character we've created. Now, of course, you can go in and make any edits, maybe to the head and add some loop cuts and then start modifying the shape. So G, then YY to move that backwards. If you wanted some sort of chin, Control R to add a loop cut and maybe move the top up a bit. G, then ZZ. And we've got more of a funny object there. And you might want to add a mirror modifier to this shape if you wanted a bit more head shaped. I'm going to undo some of those edits, maybe keep that one there just to keep things nice and simple. Now we can also see that all our objects are in our monster collection just here. So we can easily hide the whole monster, make him visible, or select the whole monster by right clicking and select object. And we can then G to grab in the X axis, move him across, 
bring our old man back and we can then start positioning them in the scene. So that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.